How's it going, everybody? It is I, Vigil. I hope you guys are having a beautiful day, and welcome back to another Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon Wi-Fi battle versus Hasui over here in the OU tier. So if you do enjoy these, make sure to hit that like button on the video, and the team I'm using is in the description if you do want to try it out, made by me, because I used it and I showed it on live a little while back because I wanted to use Wigglytuff on a Sticky Webs team. Wigglytuff has the ability competitive, so whenever you lower one of its stats, it gets to raise a special attack by two, just like Melodic. If you ever use competitive melodic. So yeah, Shuckle, Sticky Webs, you know, nothing too new on this channel at least. Because I love using Shuckle, Stealth Rocks, and Sticky Webs with Encore and Final Gambit. That's usually like the set I always like to run. People like to run Toxic and other little, you know, just gimmicks with Shuckle. But me personally, I like that. And Bisharp, Life Orb, Adamant, Max Attack, Max Speed. And then Mega Pinsir is actually a very interesting set with Stone Edge instead of Quick Attack. I wanted to use Stone Edge because I felt like with the Stick Webs team, I can really bait a lot of Defog and a lot of just trying to get, remove the hazards. Especially since this team really relies on the Stick Webs and the Stealth Rocks too, so I want to try and minimize them from getting rid of them. So that's why Stone Edge is there for like Zapdos. Maybe you can catch it on a Tornadus. I've definitely caught Tornadus on switches with Mega Pinsir, funny enough, because people do run defense with Tornadus. Uh, theory and form as a defogger like max HP they can take a frustration or a return and yeah I mean some of the Pokemon do benefit from getting defogged on like B Bisharp's Defiant, Wigglytuff's competitive and Superior's contrary you can raise evas of evasion with uh, it's being defogged and then you can't really wrap spin when there's a Mimikyu around and especially since it has Disguise it can take a hit too as well but it does break the Disguise if you you know predict Mimikyu to come in on a rapid spin and also on top of that, most rap spinners are like X control in the tier and they have uh, Mold Breaker and they can just Iron Head you and destroy you and they ignore pretty much your ability disguise. So yeah, with that being said, let's just jump right into it. Looking at Hotsui's team, we have Electrode screens probably with Spikes of Celgor, that's what I'm guessing. And then I'm guessing like Mega Metacham for just, you know, breaking capabilities. And then Mew maybe set up, Infernape maybe set up, and then Magirna maybe Calm Mind Shift Gear or something like that, maybe Trick Room as well. But we're going to still get the hazards up, hopefully, since we do have the ability... Uh, not ability. Well, we do have the ability sturdy, so we can live any one hit. And we have the item Mental Herb, so even if they taunt me, I can uh, activate that Mental Herb and get something on that turn. And I get Stick Webs up, since I feel like Stick Webs do a lot more work versus his team. Since Stealth Rocks, he doesn't really have too much that are super weak to it. I uh, usually want to get Stealth Rocks up versus a team with Volcarona, Charizard, some like flying types, fire types, you know, the drill. Or maybe you think there's a sturdy mod. You want to break, so he actually got the light screen up. That's pretty nice as I went for a final game. I thought he was going to taunt again, so that's why I went for final game. That's instead of going for stealth rocks. I could have got the stealth rocks up, but what if he taunted? That would have sucked. So yeah, uh, I guess he expected me to predict the taunt right there, so he wanted to get the light screen up. So I bring Mimikyu Shadow Sneak. He has the aftermath, so I take some little chip, but that's fine. At least it's not static, because that would have been worse. Um, because then I could have gotten paralyzed. In came Magirna. I'm just going to sack Wigglytuff. Unfortunately, Wigglytuff doesn't really do much this game. It does do some work, though. I got it in the showdown uh, live that I uploaded a little while back with this team. It did do some work. It's Fighting MZ with four attacks. Fighting MZ Folks Blast to just, like, destroy Heatrans and Tyranitars. And just other Pokemon. So uh, I bring in Bisharp. I didn't really have something that could one-shot Magirna, so I felt like Bisharp was going to be the sack with choice versus a team that has Infernape. And, I mean, it does do work versus Mew, and it does do work versus Mega Metacham, but I don't really one-shot Mega Metacham, and I don't know if that's a defense of Mew. It could have Wisp, so I'm just like, okay, whatever. I'm just going to weaken the Magirna so that Mega Pinsir can kind of just destroy the team and Mimikyu as well. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. A, a lot of my team just did work versus them, his team, so I was just like, okay, Bisharp, you're going to be the sack of choice. And plus, I could have Ironhead flinched at him as well, so that's why I wanted to go Bisharp's route as well. But it didn't happen. I mean, he knocks me out, and then I bring in Mega Pinsir and Earthquake him. So, this really surprised me. I was like, whoa, it's going to be an Adore Aselgore with activating our weakness policy over there. So, I'm guessing, I don't know. Every time I battle Hossby, he always has some gimmick like a uh, weakness policy. I don't know. He's been watching too much Wheels when you know. <laughs> but that's pretty cool because I could actually get sweep swept by this Aselgore, funny enough, because he has Endure, and then he has me first. He probably predicted me to go for a quick attack. I don't have quick attack, so that's why I switched into Superior. He's faster because he has the ability on Burden, so that's why he can outspeed my entire team, even though with Sticky Webs lowering his speed. So yeah, pretty much he is off the charts. Now over here is a very risky play that I did, Swords Dancing Up. He could have broken my sub with the Bug Buzz, but I guess he went for Endure for some reason. I don't know why. He should have went for me first because... Actually, no, that doesn't make sense. Um, maybe he should have went for me first because even if he does 
Like, I still knock him out, so I guess that's why he went through the end door. So, yeah, maybe I couldn't have gotten swept by a Solgor. I felt like I could have, though, because if he went for me first, he can break my disguise, and then maybe Mew or Infernape could maybe live a hit, and I don't get the Swords Dance off, so that's why I did want a Swords Dance. But I could have, yeah, that was a little risky thing that I did, uh, because Mimikyu does knock out the rest of his mons. Mew, Infernape, and Mega Metacham all get one-shotted. Now I remember what I was thinking. Because, like, if he bug buzzed as I Swords Danced, and he broke my disguise, that could be really bad, because then he can me first afterwards as... Like, if I try to attack him and he can knock me out, since he has that weakness policy, like, probably plus two, and then I, he copies my Shadow Sneak, it probably knocks me out. And, yeah, that'd just be really bad. But luckily he didn't Bug Buzz on my Swords Dance, because I felt like I really just had to, since he had more sacks than me. Because if I didn't, I wouldn't be able to knock out, like, Infernape, and Infernape could be really dangerous. Uh, or Mew, and Mew, if it Rock Polishes, I kind of just lose if it does that, because it can literally just Munium Z my team. And psychic everything. Like Munium Z Superior or Munium Z the Pincers. So that was a really scary game, but really, really close as well. Hopefully, that, you know, if you didn't understand that, hopefully I explained it a little bit better. Like my thought process versus the Selgor and Mimikyu scenario. Because I always thought that was like a little interesting scenario. Like when while I was watching back this battle. Still uh, pretty dangerous, that Selgor set. I was really like, oh god, what is that? Me first, endure weakness policy with Bug Buzz. I think that's all the moves he showed. I don't know what his last move is. Pretty sure. Either way, GG Tim. Next up, he guys versus La Flair. And uh, I've seen this team a lot on Showdown Ladder, I think. Like, Kimonium Z, Excadrill could be Leftovers or Life Orb or Z move as well. With Actually, I, I don't think it had Alakazam on the team. It had something else on the team. But I know it had Tangrowth and Zapdos. Um, I don't know. I've just seen like a lot of variations of the Sand Kamo offense with uh, Zapdos and Tangrowth. Either way, though, if I get webs up, Mega Pinsir goes in because I got the move Stone Edge. And when you have Stone Edge with Mega Pinsir, ooh, some teams just get demolished. And LaFlair's team, there's just no stopping Mega Pinsir. Like, once I get those webs up, it's over. So, lead off a of Shuckle. He leads off with of Exodrill very nicely because he could Iron Head flinch me, but he actually doesn't do that. I, don't, I thought he would uh, try that because it does two shot me since I'm a max special defensive Shuckle. So I got the webs up, he goes for the Swords Dance pretty early on in the game, I have to admit, but he probably just doesn't want to one-shot me, but he does have the ability Sand Rush, since, Sand Rush, since he does have Tyranitar. And yeah, I do get flinched right there, so good for him. So Extra Drill, Extra Drill I can't really one-shot with one of my team members, I think. Actually, Mega Pinsir can one-shot, so that's why he went into Mega Pinsir, uh, I'm pretty sure. But it's like, a, I think it might have been a roll, I don't know, I don't remember. Because, you know, it's obviously not stab, but Mega Pinsir is so dang powerful. It just depends if the extra drill has HP investment, but I think he doesn't. So over here, I really wanted to predict the Swords Dance and him switching in Zapdos, because everybody switches in Zapdos on their on a Mega Pinsir. Like, it's just the easiest switching, unless he got the, the Stone Edge. So I make a risky play going for the Swords Dance, and plus, even if he went for Discharge, I think I have a slight chance of getting knocked out. Like, I think I always live unless he gets a nice roll, like a really high roll and knocks me out. So luckily, he defogged right there, got rid of the webs, but still, his team is pretty dang slow without the sand, and I'm at plus two attack, so nothing is really going to take that. The only thing that can really outspeed me is Mega Alakazam. If it is Mega Alakazam, he could be Mega Titar, but he's not Mega Titar, as you can see. So Titar goes down. The only thing that can really outspeed me now is Exodrill, and obviously I'm probably going to switch out versus Exodrill because I don't want to take a Steelium Zero or a Rock Slide. So that's why I go into Bisharp, because Bisharp can take either or, and I can go for a Sucker Punch versus the Excadrill and do some good damage versus him. So, uh, yeah. That's why you gotta predict your opponents, because obviously some people would be scared of staying on a Zapdos, but really you just gotta hope that they don't discharge, hope that they defog, get them under the webs, and then you can hope that hit, hit your Stone Edges pretty much and knock out Zapdos as that plus two attack. So, Bisharp, a necessary sacrifice to weaken the opponents. The Pokemon again, just like Magirna in the last game, putting in range for the other guys, and uh, yeah, that's when a lot of people need to learn when using Hyper Offense. You need to try and not preserve and position yourself well. Positioning is very, very important with hyper offensive teams and knowing what you need in the back to win the game. And sacrifices are definitely meant um, to win the game as well. Like, you just gotta sometimes just sacrifice a mon, even though you think you need to preserve every single mon and have more uh, sacks in them. Because, like I said, positioning. So, uh, yeah. Keeping Mimki's disguise is very important, even though I could Swords Dance up on Tangrowth and probably knock it out. I want to preserve the disguise just in case I need it. And plus, Wigglytuff doesn't really do too much versus the rest of their team, since I don't have a fairy move for Kamo. And plus, Kamo probably destroys me with a close combat. 
as well. But Kamo can't really do much to uh, mimic you either way, since as long as I keep the disguise intact, because Kamo could have like, I guess I don't really see people run flash cannon or iron head. Most people just run like flamethrower, close combat, clanging skills, and what a, like what I've experienced in Dragon Dance with Clanger Soul Blaze. But yeah, we have the Fighting Z Ice Beam. We don't really do much to a Soul Vest Tang growth. That's what I'm assuming is, since you know my special attacks do nothing. But now I can bring in Mega Pinsir, and Mega Pinsir outspeeds Kamo, it destroys Tangrowth, and should be able to live a hit from Splinter, the Mega Alakazam. Also, LaFleur has some pretty good nicknames. Rest in peace to Nipsey, that Zapdos, that's a rapper, I do believe that, died a little while back, unfortunate. So, well, like, pretty recently, I think like a month or two ago. Either way, we live the Psychic, which is awesome, I kind of expected that. Maybe it's a roll, I don't know, but yeah. Mega Alakazam's not gonna live that frustration, even though I'm not running minimum hap- uh, yeah, m not running minimum happiness on my Mega Pinsir. I think I have like 70 happiness, because sometimes I just don't have it. And uh, yeah, still does enough, because Mega Alakazam doesn't have the best defense, and Mega Pinsir has insanely high attack, especially with the Aerial Ace boost. And Kamo just goes down, because we naturally outspeed Kamo, so that's awesome. So that's a GG versus LaFlair. Next up we got Last Game versus Prince, and Prince, looking at their team, looks pretty uh, similar. I've seen this team before. Uh, this is a team I used in my Garchomp sweep video, and I think Pokemon used it like a while back too. <laughs> uh, I think that's where I got it from as well, and I kind of didn't like the team to be honest, but it's still a pretty hard-hitting team. The reason why I didn't like it is because it has top of blue, and then three ground types with Earthquake. <laughs> so you kind of just like nerf yourself. But still, it's a pretty dope team, like has Sticky Whiz. But the only problem is, it gotta get swept by Superior. Like, look at Superior and look at the switch-ins versus their team on Leaf Storm, and you just keep boosting your stats. Like, there's nothing you can really do. I don't know, you have to have Scarf Landers, I think, uh, to U-turn on the team or something like that. Because uh, once you get the Leaf Storm off, oof, it is over. So yeah, I'll lead off a of Shuckle. I'm gonna try and get the webs up as it leads off of Mammoth Swine. Mammoth Swine is the Stealth Rocker I remember on this team. Um, I think it's Metronome Mammoth Swine, I'm pretty sure, with Earthquake, Knockoff. No, wait, is this the Stealth Rocker? No, I think Landris is the Stealth Rocker. This is a four attack with Mammoth Swine, I think. I don't remember. Could just look in my uh, team builder and see the team, though. But uh, either way, all I know is Superior can sweep, and I get all my hazards up, too. I don't think this team had Defog, too, so that's why I was like, let's get those hazards up, baby. So, uh, yeah. That's why sometimes Mega Garchomp likes to run Stomping Tantrum as well, because of the grass terrain I've seen. I think that's a set on Mega Garchomp uh, before, like some people ran. But yeah, we go into Superior, just go for the Leaf Storm, because I know I can take an Ice Shard. And I, since I used the team before, I know he's not Focus Sash. So yeah, that's why um, I do that. He could have changed it, obviously, which would have sucked, because Superior literally just swept his team. But I risked it for the Biscuit, so... And right in comes Rebombi. Now this does have Focus Sash, but since I got the rocks up, we break the Focus Sash. And we can just go for the Hidden Power Fire to absolutely one-shot this and not risk missing at Leaf Storm since I don't want that. Uh, we're already at plus two special attack. We should be able to one-shot everything and pretty much just sweep us up here. And as long as I don't miss, Leaf Storm will sweep. So in comes Landris. I know this is not Choice Scarf, but honestly, it probably should <laughs> since he gets swept by Superior. So maybe if you use his team, uh, if you want to go look at it, I don't know, I've, you can look at the Garchomp video that I uploaded a little while back. Uh, Garchomp, Mega Garchomp sweeping. And I think I've used it in like some Wife of Battle videos too. Uh, you can look at it. It's like a Leftovers Bulky Landers, I think. And I think that was a Stealth Rocker, pretty sure. But if it was Scarf, he could have at least U-turned and then, you know, sacked another mod and U-turned and knocked out Serp. Or maybe it could have been Defog Scarf, because that's why people like Emergency uh, Defoggers, because sometimes... Your entire team will just get destroyed with Sticky Webs up unless you have an Emergency Defogger, like a f Flying type or a Levitator, because it does come in handy. Uh, and it's worth the sacrifice, even though you do lose a lot of momentum. So, yeah. Well, unfortunately, he doesn't uh, get a dodge. I don't miss. And, yeah, at least Storm just sweeps his entire team, luckily enough. Maybe Top of Bulu could have uh, came out against uh, my first Leaf Storm after I knocked out Mammal Swine. Because maybe Tabubulu could have lived, because I think this is a Solvus Tabubulu, and I'm pretty sure even at plus two special attack and grass terrain, it doesn't get knocked out when it's a Solvest. But at the same time, I don't think he can knock me out. Like, as you can see, I had, like, max special attack right there, and he doesn't get knocked out. So yeah, he definitely should have, for sure, went into his Solvest Tabubulu. But like I said, he doesn't knock me out, and I two-shot him, so at the end of the day, it didn't really matter. 
And that's a cool shiny Tapu Bulu too. I mean, it did get released. I think Tapu Fini shiny just got released too. Uh, the final final shiny Tapu. Now all you need is shiny uh, Necrozma, Lunala, and Solgaleo to be released because they haven't released that. Maybe they will never. Maybe they will. I don't know because they do have really dope shinies, the Lunala and Solgaleo, and then their forms of Necrozma as well, Duskmane and Dawn Wings. They have really cool shinies. Even Ultra Necrozma, I like it shiny too. Like it's just cool colors. I like the spacious kind of colors. I don't know. I like space. Anyway, that's gonna be it for. Prince, that's a GG to him. He got swept by Superior. So yeah, you can see how deadly the team is. I mean, it's a pretty standard team. You've probably seen some variations of the team I'm using. Sticky webs with Mega Pinsir, Mimikyu, Bisharp. There's like standard sticky web sticky webbers that like were used back when Sun and Moon uh, was starting to roll out in OU and stuff like that. But I'm just putting my little spin on it. Maybe change the EVs on Superior because I did put like more HP EVs on Serp. Uh, that's how I was able to live the hit from Boo, I think. And that's why I wasn't able to knock out Boo too. <laughs> so it kind of goes hand in hand with that. And yeah, that's going to be it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, deal thing. And if you do want to watch the battle me, my Discord is in the description. And uh, yeah, that's it. Peace, peace, everybody.